We're going to tell you how we're trying to capture waste heat and turn it into electricity using molecules. We need to do everything possible to reduce the world's carbon emissions to try to avert disastrous climate change. While generating electricity from renewable sources such as the sun and wind is vital, we must also try not to waste energy. For example, two-thirds of a power station's energy input is wasted as heat, so there's a lot of energy available. And industrial processes, server farms and individual computers all give out heat. Could we make use of it? Another thing, our mobile phones and the Internet of Things, where there's a connected sensor in everything, all need charging too often. So being able to harvest energy from the surroundings would be a great idea. But where's the heat to charge your phone? It's you. How could we turn waste heat directly into electricity? Waste heat is low grade, meaning it can't do useful things like making steam to drive a turbine. But there's another way, thermoelectricity. What is thermoelectricity? Normally, we use a voltage source like a battery to make electrons flow as a current around an electrical circuit. But it is also possible to make electrons flow using just a temperature difference. If you take a bar of metal and heat one end, the electrons in the metal at that end move around faster, and so the number of them making it to the cold end can be higher than the number of electrons traveling randomly in the other direction. This builds up a voltage, or it can drive a current around a circuit, perhaps doing something useful like charging your phone battery. There's another way. We can let electrons of particular energies through a filter more easily than other energies. Think of a fence with balls being thrown about randomly by children on one side and adults on the other children will only sometimes get their balls over the fence. The adults probably throw faster or higher, so more of their balls will go over the fence. So balls will accumulate on the children's side, just as electrons do on the cold end of a thermoelectric material. How can we make a barrier or energy filter? Our preferred method is to use physics to design short molecules to behave as electron filters. They could be so good that they work better than any other type of thermoelectric material. We need vast numbers of molecules side by side, but that's the great thing about chemistry. You can anchor them to a gold surface using a sulfur atom at one end. However, molecules are short, so it is hard to make contact to the top of each molecule. Enter the wonder material, graphene. Graphene is a sheet of carbon one atom thick, which can be draped over the layer of molecules. It conducts electricity and is very thin, so it lets heat through from the heat source. That's great, but there's a catch. If the molecules conduct heat as well as they conduct electricity, then we're in trouble. The hot side will start to cool down because its atoms are vibrating a lot and can send a wave of vibration carrying heat energy along the molecule to the cold side. If we put something heavy, such as side chains, on the molecule, then the wave of vibration gets reflected there and much of the heat will go back to the hot side. Physicists and chemists, theorists and experimentalists from Lancaster, Durham and Cambridge universities are working together to design, make and test these molecules and devices. So watch out for them in the future.